You see it. It's staring right at you. It's just one chord. What are you gonna play over one chord? In this video, you're going to get a few simple ideas to play over those one or two chord vamps. Hi, my name is Jason Klodnik, and I'm a jazz trumpeter from Denver, Colorado that helps musicians find a better way to improvise. If you're looking for a quick jazz improv tip that will help your soloing, then you've come to the right place. After years of teaching, I have found that many improvisers that need help fall into one of two categories. Those that play chord changes really well, or those that play one chord vamps really well. If you fall into the plays well over vamps category, skip ahead to the play along towards the end and jam away. For those that might be stuck on what to do with those one or two chord vamps, this is for you. Vamps, which are long sections of just one or a few chords, don't lend themselves very well to people that are strictly lick bass players or those that believe this type of chord should be played with this type of scale. The reason is that the ideas on that one scale or the licks, they run out. Then what do you play? Even more frustrating is that oftentimes there are more chord changes after that vamp. So now what? I wanna give you a few ideas that you should be able to use fairly quickly. Let's start simple, taking your existing ideas, motifs or motives, and licks. You already have them, so why not use them? But what else can be done with them? You can sequence the idea, which is taking the initial idea and moving it along a harmonic key area or scale. For instance, here's a really simple lick. It's in G minor and I can sequence it in any direction up or down G minor. Or think about it in its relative major, which is B flat. The most important aspect to this is to make sure that wherever you go, that you bring it back into G minor. This is called harmonic targeting. I can sequence it up or down in half steps, whole steps, around the cycle of fourths or fifths, or any harmonic key area. Other harmonic key areas. That leads us to another thing we can do on vamps. It's a technique called superimposition, which is just a fancy word for placing something different on top of something existing. What can you superimpose? Well, anything, especially over vamps. As long as you bring it back into the original key, remember the comment on the harmonic targeting? This is where that fits in. Many musicians like to superimpose things like Coltrane changes and other complex devices, but it can be as simple as putting the key areas 251 over the vamp. It brings it back to the key area because the vamp's chord is the one chord you're targeting. I'll give an example of some of these in the play along in a second. The last tip over vamps, which should be the easiest, but for some reason is the hardest for those that are good at playing changes, using space. There's no connecting the dots between chords on vamps. So these type of players will try to fill the space because that's what they did when there were changes. How much space do you use? It depends on the line. One thing I have beginning students do is play a line and then have them sing it back in their mind before they play something else. It's kind of like doing a call and response just with yourself. But this doesn't mean you do it the entire time. Every solo should have some sort of art to it. So you should make that space a little shorter each time as you build your ideas. Let's put this into practice and try out some of these ideas over a funky vamp in G minor. I'll play and then give you a chance to play right after.
hope you've enjoyed this video and that it has added value or benefit to your plane in some way. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell that's right next to it that lets you know when another video comes out. And if you know any other musician that might find this useful, you can share it with them too. Until then, my name is Jason Klobnik and I'll see you on the next one.